no mercy. She heard the glass breaking, the tinkling sounds as it hit the ground, and the thumping footsteps entering the school. Candace sniffed and wrinkled her nose in disgust, the smell of rotten meat repulsive to her. There must be at least a dozen rogues or more? Star informed her grimly. Can you hear or smell Lori? I'm afraid not. Not with the smell of so many rogues about. It's impossible to distinguish any other scent. Great thought, Candace grimly. She double. Checked the tranquilizer gun was loaded and aimed the gun at the entryway. Heart pounding. The sounds of growls filled the air and she heard Damon's voice shouting at them to check the school was still empty. They don't sound very organized? Star commented. We can use that to our advantage. Candace sniffed and gagged. There's one coming, Candace. It's very close, that's why the smell is stronger. She held her finger over the trigger, watching as a rogue came into the gymnasium. It sniffed the air and began to wander over to the weights and mats in the corner. Come on, thought Candace. Stay still long enough for me to shoot. Her wish was granted, the rogue stopping to sniff at the mats as she pulled the trigger and let the dart fly. It hit its target, embedding itself into the rogue's side as it gave a small yelp and fell to the ground deadly still. You need to move now, Candace? Star pushed her. Don't get caught being in the same room when he's discovered. I know, Candace said. She wriggled slowly carefully towards the general direction of the cafeteria. She was careful, moving slowly in order to make as little noise as possible, slithering along the ground clutching the gun and her bag with darts. I can make out a faint smell of potato chips. Candace, you should be above the cafeteria. Can you smell any rogues? Or Damon? I only smell rogues. Damon's not here from what I can tell. Candace gingerly lifted up a partition of the roof and stared down at the rogues below. There was three of them, all eagerly sniffing at the food. You are going to have to be fast with this many? Star sounded anxious. She loaded the gun and placed several darts beside her, needing to be able to reload quickly. Candace put her eye against her scope and lined up the first shot, a rogue currently munching his way through a bag of jerky. She shot, the dart hitting it perfectly as her fingers scrambled to put another dart in the chamber. The other two, hearing the yelp of their comrade, began to growl as they saw him lying still. Candace fired off another shot, hitting one while the other looked directly up at her. Shoot him, Candace. He's mind-linking Damon. She shot, not even waiting to see if it hit as she frantically grabbed her equipment and wriggled away. We can't stay in the roof anymore. They'll be looking for you up there now. I need somewhere to climb out safely, Candace mused. She raised a partition randomly and blinked. She was in the principal's office above his desk no less. She gingerly swung herself down wincing at the noise she made as she stood on the desk. She grabbed the gun and bag and headed to the door, looking out of the window. There was one lone rogue currently sitting in the hallway. I can only smell him, Candace. Keep moving. The more you take out, the better the odds are for us. Unless you want to shift? Not yet, Candace told her. I want you to be at full strength when we shift. If we shift now your strength will become depleted before we even face Damon. Her fingers trembling, Candace loaded and quietly opened the door. The rogue barely had time to turn its head towards the sound before she shot him. She reloaded, swinging her head around the empty hallway and slowly backing towards the science room. She darted in and shut the door, shaking, the adrenaline coursing through her wearing off. She scrambled towards the teacher's desk and hastily opened its drawers, pocketing the matches and gas lighter she found. If all else failed she could always burn them as a last resort.
She opened the next room and ducked behind the table just in time as a rogue crashed through the door. Its hackles rose as it crept towards her. Candace took a deep breath, rose and shot in one swift movement, the rogue's face surprised as it fell. I don't know how many more you'll be able to take down at this rate, Candace. Your body is starting to crash, babe. I know Candace panted, but the more we can delay them, the better the chance that Stephen has read my message and be on his way. Maybe we could just hide until then? They already know we're here. They'd find us within minutes, Star. She sat under the teacher's desk willing her body to get up and move. Shakily she stood up and peered out the door, the corridor empty. She headed into the next room and stopped short. Great Candace muttered under her breath a music room. That's really helpful. She rolled her eyes and wasn't surprised to find there was nothing useful in the teacher's desk. Star, have you picked up any traces of Lori? Nothing whatsoever, Candace. There's no sign of her. I don't think she's even here. Which means Damon's holding her elsewhere as leverage. Candace sighed. It had been a long shot, but part of her had hoped he had brought Lori. But of course Damon still had the upper hand. Fuck, she swore. Candace, you need to dispose of those vials now? Star cried. We haven't finished. Now, Candace? Star screamed and Candace obeyed. All of the darts were grabbed and put on the floor as she smashed them with her foot. The one in the gun was crushed to pieces as well and the gun swiftly flung out the window. The door to the music room smashed open with a loud bang, making her jump. Candace whirled around and stared straight into the cold eyes of an angry, pissed-off Damon. Survival Candace looked into Damon's eyes and fought to keep her face blank, not wanting him to see her fear. Damon, she said evenly as he advanced towards her, stopping in front of her, fists clenched in anger. It was a neat trick you just pulled, he spat out, spittle hitting her face as she flinched, killing of some of my helpers so to say. She shrugged, wincing as he backhanded her across the face, blood dripping from her lip even as her feet stayed firmly on the ground. Damon was impressed. Looks like you got braver after getting my cousin to mark you sexed, he growled. What can I say? He's more of a man than you'll ever be, she told him as his eyes narrowed and he grabbed her by the collar, dragging her kicking and fighting out of the room. He strode to the gymnasium, rogues following cautiously behind as he flung the doors open and dumped a wary Candace on the floor. You know it was really hard pretending to like you, Candace, he snapped you were such a frigid bitch. Refusing to open your legs to me and wanting to take it slow he mocked rolling his eyes and then Stephen comes along and you jump straight into bed with him and let him mark you as well. Was it worth it he taunted? She stood and faced him, eyes darting to the door effectively blocked off by the rogues who stood there guarding it. For some inexplicable reason they were standing back and she wondered why they weren't attacking. I can kill you quickly and painlessly Damon told her it will be boring for me to be honest and I'd be able to kill Stephen that much quicker he paused as her heart began to race we can do it the hard way and you fight me and still die. He was so bloody arrogant she thought seething, nails digging into her hands. So sure of himself as he stared her down. You have an advantage she said angrily gesturing towards the rogues. He sneered you really think I need them to help me? Then get them to leave the room, she said squarely as he raised an eyebrow at her request. Damon turned around and one by one the rogues filed out of the room as Candace folded her arms. We need to shift Candace, your human strength is waning badly. Shall we fight in human or wolf form, he asked rather graciously though his eyes were darkening as they spoke. She shifted in response, 
uncaring that her clothes were shredded in the process. There was no way in hell she would take her clothes of in front of him and be vulnerable for that brief moment. Damon eyed her wolf appreciatively a white wolf he murmured delightedly as Lucifer hummed his own approval. A real challenge for me, he roared, shifting as well into his giant black wolf. Candace was startled to see his eyes were more red now and she suspected it was beginning to lose control of his human side, his wolf beginning to take over. He charged and she leapt to the side just in time as he flew past her. He got up shaking his head and leapt towards her as she met him halfway in the air and swiped at his back as she twisted and landed behind him, a small graze on her chest from his own attempt to swipe at her. She barely had time to dart out of the way as he lunged again and she howled as he cut her deeply on her hind leg. She jumped as he turned and landed on his back as he whipped his head around and shook his body trying to dislodge her. She bit him hard on his back as he growled and threw her across the room. She skidded across the ground and hit the wall hard, stunning her for a moment. Lie still, he's bound to attack thinking you can't move. Use it to your advantage. Candace listened, staying still and whimpering for effect. Star was right. Damon wasted no time pounding towards her and she moved at the last second, her logs kicking his chest and making him slide across the floor. She strong Lucifer growled we need to be more cautious. Stop underestimating her Damon. Damon ignored him furious at how Candace seemed to be matching his strength and speed. Even as he got back up Candace lunged and sank her teeth into his neck as he swiped at her, connecting with her stomach as she avoided getting out of the way in time. Candace you need to stay out of the way while your stomach heals enough to keep fighting, dodge or whatever you can while I focus on the healing part. She listened playing what seemed like a game of chasey as Damon grew even more frustrated and enraged at her tactics. He was getting pissed of as she continually dodged and darted around him, his growls becoming more menacing and time passed. There, healed but we were lucky it was shallow otherwise it would have taken a lot longer and made us extremely weak. Damon had clearly had enough, face snarling and his hackles up. She watched as the rogues filed back in, growling themselves. He was taking the coward's way out and getting his cronies to help him after all. This is bad Star told her anxiously strong as we are. We can't take on that many rogues Candace. There must be a dozen standing there. I know, Candace told her silently as she took in the scene. Several rogues were now circling her as she tensed waiting. She took the first one down as it jumped, swiping at its neck as she darted through the opening it provided. She ran towards the doors, figuring it would give her a better chance if they couldn't all surround her at once. She felt her neck being pierced by teeth and cried out as Damon leapt on top of her and pinned her down. She bucked wildly, but his weight was too heavy and it was without success. She felt his breath near her ear as he breathed on her and she stiffened as he bit her on her back, eliciting a whimper from her as the pain hit. Why hadn't he just killed her already? Then she felt his teeth grazing her neck and she closed her eyes as she waited for the inevitable, knowing she would never see Lori or Stephen ever again. I'm sorry Star I failed, Candace thought with despair. Fight or die. Stephen thundered towards the school, Logan and Jonathan on his heels as he ran as fast as he could, cursing the necessity to be in his human form. Mint howled in his head, urging him to hurry up as he put on a burst of speed. The second he hit the school's parking lot he shifted, shredding his clothes and bursting through the smashed front doors of the school. He took in the broken glass and the body of a knocked-out rogue with surprise lowering his muzzle and sniffing it, detecting the scent of wolfsbane. Candace came prepared? Mint said grimly. I can smell her Stephen. She's on the far side of the school and I can smell more rogues as well. 
The sound they made must have alerted Damon and his rogues to their presence as several rogues appeared in the hallway, snarling and snapping their teeth at him, red eyes glowing in the darkness. He heard growling from behind him and knew it was Logan and Jonathan. The other warriors are minutes behind us? Jonathan mind linked him. We're on our own for now then, Stephen growled. Work together you two and don't die for goodness sake. He was grateful the corridor wasn't wide, meaning they had to separate in order to attack. He met the first one head on as the rogue lunged at him, several others darting past him and aiming for Logan and Jonathan who met them just as fiercely. As he bit and kicked and scratched furiously, Logan and Jonathan were behind him fighting just as hard working in tandem to pin down the wolves while the other bit their neck or snapped it to kill them. Even taking down one rogue was tough work, but as several more joined the fight it was becoming harder to fight in a corridor littered with bodies and themselves as well. He heard a yelp behind him and Stephen turned to see Logan being bit as Jonathan fought another rogue, trying desperately to help his mate. He was about to spring and go help them when a body collided with his side and he hit the wall with a heavy thud. The rogue snarled at him, drool trailing down its open mouth as it swiped Stephen's back and he howled at the stinging pain from the rogue's paws as it backed away and got ready to attack him again. Stephen forced himself up, ignoring the sharp pain as he eyed the rogue warily, hoping that Jonathan and Logan were still all right. He couldn't afford to spare a look right now. The rogue snarled, jumping towards him and Stephen met him in the air, swiping his claws directly across the rogue's chest as it howled in agony and dropped to the floor. Stephen didn't wait for it to get up, using his jaws to bite and twist its neck, dropping the lifeless body to the ground without mercy. He turned in time to see Logan fighting side by side with Jonathan and realized he must have got out of the rogue's grasp in time. Several more wolves came piling in the front door and Stephen heaved a sigh of relief as they joined the fray, fighting the leftover rogues left and right. Stephen continued to fight, helping out any of his warriors that got hurt or pinned down until all that remained were the bloody and broken bodies of rogues his warriors consisting of shallow and unthreatening injuries he was glad to note. He mind-linked everyone, are you all okay to continue? There was a chorus of agreement from everyone as they waited his instructions. I can smell Candace, but I can't determine her exact location, Mint said with anguish. I can smell rogues as well, but it's faint, maybe two or three left but their scent is blocking hers almost completely. He was frustrated, the need to get to his mate overwhelming him as Stephen felt the same. We're going to have to split up to find her. Everyone listen to what I say, Stephen ordered. Mint says Candace is in here somewhere on the other side of the school but can't pinpoint exactly where. We are all going to have to split up. I want everyone to disperse in groups of two. Just in case. I don't want anyone encountering a rogue on their own if it can be avoided. If you come across Candace, mind link me immediately. If you require assistance, mind link immediately. Don't wait until it's too late. Do not under any circumstances try to take on Damon even with two of you. Damon still has alpha blood and is stronger than the average wolf. I won't know one dying today. Is that understood, he said warningly. Yes, Alpha, they chorused, bowing their heads in respect. He began to organize the groups, Jonathan and Logan of course staying together. All of them were directed to search in different directions as they dispersed. What about you? Jonathan mind-linked him hovering with Logan as the last two to leave. I'll be fine Stephen assured him as Jonathan hesitated then with a growl turned and stalked in the direction Stephen had indicated, Logan reluctantly following behind with one last backward glance. Stephen took a deep breath and gingerly made his way past the prone bodies of the rogues, grimacing as his paws and feet walked through the blood on the floor, 
his nose scrunching up at the metallic smell it emitted into the air. He sniffed, nose searching for any trace of his precious mate as he paused every minute or so, ears twitching for the slightest sound of her as well. I think I can smell her slightly Stephen, but I could be wrong. Just move slowly and keep sniffing. So absorbed in their search, nose to the ground and all their concentration on Candace that both of them failed to notice the figure in the shadows that waited impatiently for them to move past, sliding out and making its own way through the school, running silently through the slick and slippery floors, blood coating the bottom of their shoes. Lori's POV She waited heart thumping as the car continued its journey, not certain of where it was going. Every muscle in her body ached, her stomach as well, but she did her best to ignore it and focus on what she needed to do. Lori felt the car slowing down and then it stopped completely. Had it parked somewhere? She resisted the urge to leap put of the car, instead opening the boot open slightly, wincing at the slight creak it made. There were hushed whispers and she strained her ears to listen, hoping they wouldn't notice her presence. School she heard and Candace and finally helped Stephen before the sound of their footsteps thundered away. To make sure she was alone, she forced herself to stay there, several minutes ticking by before she cautiously opened the boot of the car fully and hopping out with a groan. The boot slammed shut as she looked both ways down the street, relieved to find herself alone. Lori was guessing that Candace was at her school judging by the conversation she had just overhead. Luckily she estimated that she was roughly about a block away and she put her hands in her pockets and made her way, body hunched over due to the biting cold as she hurried as fast as she could with the pain she was in. The car park was empty when she arrived, and she slowly made her way to the front entrance. The sound of growls and howls drifting towards her as she pressed herself against the wall and peeked in. Her eyes widened in disbelief at the scene in front of her. Wolves were fighting everywhere, bloodshed all over the hallway floor as they bit, scratched and clawed at each other. She could see glowing red eyes in the darkness and figured that the ones with normal eyes were her friends. She flinched when one of the wolves was pinned to the ground frantically pawing at a red-eyed wolf while another of her friends tried to get to him. Her hand searched the ground and grabbed a small pebble, flinging it at the red-eyed wolf and distracting it enough for whoever the other wolf was to scramble free. There was no chance of her getting through the front door with all of the melee going on. She also wasn't about to risk walking in and getting killed. Lori wasn't that stupid or foolish. Instead, she crept past and sidled around the building, glancing around the corner before going around the side. There was a side entrance, and she silently hoped the door was unlocked. Pressing her ear to the sturdy wooden door, Lori listened, trying to determine if anything was on the other side of the door. There were no growls or sounds of footsteps, though, and she tried the handle, silently celebrating as it turned easily in her hand. The school really needed to be a bit more careful, she thought with a bit of a frown. The door opened with a slight creak and she paused, heart pounding in her chest, to see if she would be discovered. The sound must have been missed in the chaos inside though, and she slid inside and carefully shut the door, tiptoeing down the hallway, pressing herself against the wall and trying to blend in with the darkness. The sounds of growls grew louder and she saw the fighting ending as she peered around the corner and watched a larger group of wolves destroy the few red-eyed ones left. The ones left gathered in a group around the large wolf and bowed their heads to Lori's astonishment. Her eyes cast over the bodies on the ground and the dead staring eyes as she shuddered, trying not to vomit as she noticed the pool of blood she had stepped in, trickling out from the other hallway. She definitely wasn't going to walk over dead bodies, she decided. That was just asking for trouble. The wolves began to disperse in pairs of two, almost like a buddy system, thought Lori, until at last only three were left. 
She watched the mass of one stare down the other two which slowly left, one glancing back with a sad look. Lori wrestled with whether or not she should show herself but reminded herself that they would send her away or lock her up for her safety. Instead, she waited, trembling as the big-ass wolf began to head down the corridor, weaving and stepping over the bodies, completely unaffected as it stared ahead sniffing. Please don't smell me thought Lori holding her breath. Evidently it didn't for it passed her as she exhaled in relief and carefully made her way back down the corridor. She could have sworn she had seen some sort of workshop as she wandered down and she wanted to check it out first, maybe find something that could be used as a weapon. She almost cheered when she found the room again, peering through the window. It looked like it was used for woodworking. Plenty of saws at any rate in bits and pieces and she opened the door, eyes straining as she walked amongst the tables. Handheld saws would be no use and she ignored them. There was a massive amount of hammers though and nails she saw with glee. She held one in her hand, the handle smooth and the top of it fairly heavy. She spied the teacher's desk and rummaged through it, disappointed that it didn't have anything interesting. As she went to shut the drawer though something shiny glinted at her and she grabbed the small letter opener, examining it thoughtfully. It wasn't extremely large but it fit in her hand comfortably and she could put it in her pocket. Lori pocketed it and grabbed the hammer, going out the other exit, the hallway eerily silent and devoid of anybody. Without knowing where she was going exactly she began to wander down random hallways weaving to the back of the school as she kept to the shadows. She could hear growls soft and close and her feet headed towards the sound automatically, the gymnasium in front of her. She saw no one near her and she peeked in front of her, hand to her mouth. She could see a stunning white wolf fighting a horrible looking black one, two mangy looking wolves with their backs to her guarding the doors. How was she going to get in now? The white wolf was pinned down now and Lori didn't stop to think, bursting through the doors as the big wolf lowered itself to bite the white wolf's neck. Footsteps sounded behind her as the wolves guarding the doors turned and snarled at her. She jumped back in time as the big wolf from earlier crashed through the door and charged them. The ugly wolf pinning down the white wolf put its head up startled, taking in his guards fighting the big one, eyes sweeping the room as it found Lori. He growled warningly at her, even as it bent down again intending to kill its prey who was still trying to shift out from beneath him. Gathering all her courage Lori dashed towards the wolf and lifted the hammer high, bringing it down directly on his head. She felt herself sailing through the air. The breath knocked out of her as she fell. A red-eyed wolf was stalking over to her as the other one continued to fight its opponent, slowly losing. Lori clutched the letter opener in her hand as she scooted back, the wolf's ears low as it bared its canines at her. She spared a glance behind her, letting out a whoosh as she saw the white wolf up and fighting. Lori began to pray as the wolf leapt throwing herself on her back and as it stood over her, she thrust the opener into its chest as hard as she could muster, using her legs to throw it away from her as it threw its head back and howled. It slumped to the floor, blood pouring out of it and Lori stayed lying there, grateful when it didn't get back up and continue to attack. She closed her eyes, the pain from her previous injuries and her new ones reverberating through her body. Her head was throbbing from her fall and her limbs were heavy, making her unable to move. Darkness beckoned and she succumbed to it gratefully, the noises of fighting still going on around her as she slipped into unconsciousness. Death Candace struggled beneath Damon, knowing that her efforts were for naught. She was well and truly screwed now. She heard a loud bang and darted her eyes in the direction of the noise seeing Stephen in wolf form leap through where the doors had been. The rogues guarding the entrance instantly attacked as he fought furiously, desperate to get to her. Due to her limited vision, Candace was unable to see Lori, 
wondering why Damon was staring at something and growling warningly. Just as he went to bite into her neck she heard a loud thud as something hit Damon directly on the back of his head. He let out a ferocious growl and swiped, sending someone flying as she kicked and wrestled away from him. Her eyes widened as she took in Lori on the floor and a rogue approaching her. She went to run to her little sister and was stopped short by Damon who was frothing at the mouth. He snarled as she backed away. Candace kept shooting quick glances at Lori, heart pounding as she watched the rogue jump at Lori who took it down in front of Candace's incredulous eyes. Way to go Lori she thought fiercely as she stared down Damon. His body tensed and she leapt to the side, narrowly avoiding his claws as she skidded and scrambled to face him. He's not kidding around anymore Candace, he looks like he's becoming crazed and that's really not a good thing. I know Candace told her desperately, I just need to think of a plan. Steven's still fighting and I don't want to rely on him to save me. Just let me think. Damon got in a lucky swipe at her side, and she howled as his claws sliced open her flesh and blood began to stain her white fur. As she looked around the gymnasium, something caught her eye and she began to formulate a plan as she dodged another attack. Do you think it will work, Star? If you time it right it might just work, but only if he thinks you're almost dead, Candace. Candace met Damon head on allowing him to bite her and fling her away. More blood appeared from her? Cuts and grazes. Come on you basic thought Candace grimly. Get cocky and underestimate my prowess. Another swipe and a thin gash bled across her stomach. She winced from the sting, standing bravely as he sideswiped her and sent her across the slippery floor as her feet scrambled to find purchase. Damon was slowing down now clearly thinking she wasn't much of a threat, something Candace had hoped would happen. As she stood up, she pretended to limp, needing him to think her weak, angling her body as he rammed her. It was almost too perfect as her body slid in the direction she needed, using her body to cover the hammer as she pretended to be too weak to get back up. She also mind-linked Stephen, don't do anything, it will upset my plan. She closed off the link as he grew confused and waited for the perfect moment. Damon sprung, muscles coiled, eyes gleaming triumphantly as he aimed at her back, ready to snap her neck and kill her once and for all. Stephen would be next, out of his mind with grief as his mate died. He would be an easy kill Damon thought maliciously. Candace thanked God for her werewolf healing shifting to human the second before Damon's feet left the ground, hands grabbing the hammer with slippery fingers as she rolled over, thrusting the claw into Damon's throat as he landed over her, too late to stop his descent. He gave a whimper as the hammer delved deep into him, staggering sideways as she watched, eyes glazing over as he slumped to the ground before going completely blank. Stephen had been carefully checking Lori for a pulse and had been relieved to find her still breathing and just unconscious. His head shot up when Damon went flying and he raced to Candace's side in a second as she smiled weakly at him. Her hand gently patted his fur as he shifted, clutching her hand to his chest. Lori she wheezed as he gave her a grin. Lori is unconscious and injured but she's fine Candace, he shook his head in admiration, both of you are gutsy women. She escaped you know, and somehow managed to find her way here to help you. Sounds like Lori, she joked as she inwardly celebrated that her sister was okay. Stephen's eyes gazed down at her in concern as he took in the various injuries on Candace's naked form. They weren't healing and he suspected that she was too weak too. Several footsteps sounded as the rest of the warriors dashed through the entrance, poised to fight, heads drooping as they saw Damon's dead body. They all looked a bit sheepish, Logan and Jonathan's wolves making their way to Lori's side. Never do this to me again, Stephen told her with a fierce glower, I could have lost you, Candace. 
You could have died, he exclaimed. She returned his glare, and if I told you directly you might have died. Suddenly she blushed, aware of her nudity as her eyes darted towards the wolves who were standing patiently and watching them. With interest, Stephen turned and glowered at them, shifting his body to block their views as she almost laughed out loud. Her body was in so much pain and she groaned as she attempted to move. She was exhausted, her body completely drained, feeling the urge to close her eyes and sleep. So tired she whispered to Stephen drowsily. Candace stay awake sweetheart, hold on for a little longer Stephen said urgently, gingerly picking her up. Her mind felt fuzzy and her limbs felt unbearably heavy as she felt something placed over her, something warm and soft like a blanket. It was only after that, that Candace realized how cold she was, her body violently shivering. Sorry Stephen, she whispered, but I'm so tired. He clutched her, watching worriedly as she closed her eyes. Candace felt her eyelids become heavy and closed them giving into the darkness taking over. The last thing she heard was Stephen crying out Candace in a panicked voice before she passed out completely in his arms. A little bit of hope. Stephen stared at the various tubes and machines connected to Candace. She was clad in a white hospital gown, her skin the palest shade of white. She looked so peaceful he thought with a stifled sob, but she was still not waking up. He was barely able to think straight, sitting in the hard rubber chair by her bed and clasping her limp hand in his. He didn't notice the time passing, the DRs shuffling in and out to perform their numerous tests. He wouldn't have even eaten if Jonathan hadn't strode in and shoved a burger and fries at him, telling him in no-nonsense terms to eat. Lori was also in the hospital but had woken up was merely resting as her wounds had been patched up and tended to. Stephen hadn't divulged the extent of how serious Candace's were, not knowing fully himself until the DRs spoke to him. Alpha a voice said timidly from the doorway. He looked at the woman with bleary eyes, taking in her white coat and spectacles as she came in cautiously, clipboard clutched in hand. My name's Cindy, she said quietly, I'm the neurologist and a specialist in my field when it comes to shifters. He nodded mechanically, silently urging her to continue as? She checked Candace's vitals quickly and efficiently before sitting in the other chair opposite him. She tapped her pen on the clipboard as she gazed at him sympathetically. I've personally rerun every test that was performed, she told him earnestly, her blood count is fine, iron is fine, and all the other things we could check in her blood as well. Stephen was glad for that, but it still didn't answer the important question hovering on his lips. Why hasn't she woken up then, and why is she healing like a human, he gestured towards her body and the injuries that should have begun healing by now. Cindy looked at him with pity in her eyes. From what I can determine I believe that Candace is in what we call a restorative coma. Stephen was perplexed what is a restorative coma? She leaned forward a restorative coma is when the person, Candace for instance, goes into a coma from serious injuries and her wolf side is too weak to heal her or can't heal her for a myriad of reasons. Stephen rubbed his bleary eyes trying to digest the information. Can you tell when she might wake up? He asked hopefully as she gravely shook her head. From the extent of her injuries and the way she's healing at a human pace I would estimate weeks, maybe even months she advised as he closed his eyes defeated. Mint was whimpering in pain as he too despaired about his mate lying there, helpless to help her. For now we are keeping her strictly monitored, making sure her vitals are stable and that her dressings and wounds are taken care of consistently and dressings checked and changed the DR was saying as he half-heartedly listened still lost in his grief. 
The four we have placed in her hand is giving her fluids and the other one will feed her the nutrients and minerals etc. required to maintain her body weight and keep it strong. Stephen looked back at Candace longingly, brushing a loose hair away from her face. She had fought so bravely, so strongly that it was a miracle she hadn't died he thought. She was so strong so courageous and he couldn't bear the thought of not having his precious Candace by his side. For now Jonathan would run the pack in his stead allowing Stephen to remain at Candace's bedside, but he wouldn't be able to do it for more than a few weeks. You said sometimes a wolf can't heal the human side for a myriad of reasons, Stephen said suddenly as he looked at Cindy with a raised eyebrow. What kind of reasons would that be? Thank you, I've been wondering that myself, Mint told him with a growl. There's a host of reasons, Cindy said thoughtfully the person has lost their mate and their wolf is so stricken with grief that they can't cope with trying to heal their human. Other times it's because they have fought to the point of being on the brink of death she mused. Is that what you think happened to Candace? That she fought to the brink of death? Cindy looked pensive it could be she admitted, but I actually believe there to be a different reason. What? Was Candace experiencing any nausea, headaches or dizziness? She questioned as he shook his head. Not that I saw, he said blankly, I never saw her even look the slightest bit sick and she never mentioned it. So she's still in the very early stages, Cindy murmured to herself. Early stages of what? Stephen growled as she flinched. He apologized quickly as she waved a hand at him and told him to stop. Candace is pregnant Stephen, she explained the blood tests showed that it was in the early stage only a few weeks maybe, if that, but I wanted to confirm with you on whether she exhibited any symptoms. He was struck dumb, the words echoing over and over in his exhausted mind. She's pregnant, he said in disbelief. Is the baby okay? Cindy looked at him apologetically, I'm afraid it's too early to say either way. We'll check her blood work every day, and if her HCG levels continue to increase at a steady rate, we will know the baby is still alive. It's the best we are able to do, she told him. We could be having a pup? Mint said sadly wishing they had been told in different circumstances. Cindy stood up and gave him a small smile, if you have any more questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to find me or track me down. Is there anything you need to ask before I go check on another patient? Stephen shook his head, getting to his feet and shaking her hand. Thank ya, he told her for everything you are doing to help with Candace. She gave a small nod and headed out the door, heels clicking as she rushed to another patient. Stephen kissed Candace's forehead and stroked her hair, leaning his own head against her. Come back to me Candace, I need you and so does Mint. Lori needs you, Logan needs you, the entire pack needs you he thought. Our baby will need you he whispered to her, a crack in his voice as he refused to believe their child might not have made it. Not with this stubborn, wonderful woman as its mother. Moon goddess. Candace looked around her in awe. The grass was so soft underneath her feet and the sky was the purest shade of blue. A lake shimmered in the distance and trees of various heights surrounded her, birds chirping from their perches on branches. It was warm but not hot, and she felt serene and calm as she took in her surroundings. As she moved, she noticed she was wearing a white dress that gathered at her bodice and flowed down to her ankles. Her feet were bare, but no twigs or stones littered the ground she walked on and she found this strange as she came to the large lake in front of her. Candace looked at it, wondering if the water was safe to drink. It looked so inviting and she felt parched. It's safe to drink, a voice said, amused behind her, and she whirled around, facing the most beautiful woman she had ever seen. Her hair was like golden silk, cascading down her back in waves, 
blue eyes sparkling as she looked directly back at Candace. She was tall with a small waist, clad in a white gown also with silver that sparkled with every movement she made. Are you an angel? Candace asked Odd. The woman laughed, her voice musical like bells in the air. No, Candace, I'm not, she said calmly. She gestured to the lake with a smile, it's safe. Drink and relieve your thirst. It never occurred to Candace to question her as she turned and knelt beside the lake, cupping her hands and drinking the water with eagerness. The water was refreshing and cool and she sighed as her throat began to feel a lot better, standing to look at the gorgeous woman again. Who are you? she asked as the woman smiled at her. I have many names, she told Candace, but you might know me best as the Moon Goddess. You're the Moon Goddess, Candace spluttered slightly panicked. What was the etiquette when meeting a goddess? Should she curtsy or bow or kneel at her feet? Her mind was going on a tangent when the moon goddess interrupted. I can hear your thoughts, she laughed, and I would prefer you not curtsy or bow my child. Am I dead? Candace wondered as the moon goddess gestured for her to follow her, wandering into a thicket of trees. They walked in silence, Candace wondering where they were going until they came to what looked like a clearing with a large circle of stones. Star was in the middle her fur covered in dry blood, her body slumped on the ground and was barely breathing. Candace went to rush to her, but the moon goddess held her back with an arm. She lives child, she said gently sitting on the grass and indicating for Candace to do the same. Star is using up her last reserves to try and heal herself, but it's taking time. Why is it taking so long? Normally she would draw energy from you as well, but at the moment she is unable to for it would cause you to lose something precious. Can't we help her? Candace pleaded, I don't want her to die. The moon goddess looked pleased you care for your wolf very much then? Of course Candace blurred out, she's my best friend and a part of me. Do you love her? Candace didn't hesitate, yes. The moon goddess clasped both of Candace's hand. I saw everything that happened at the school. You did everything so bravely, Candace. You even tried to stay in your human form for as long as possible before you changed in order to keep Star's energy from fading. She paused and looked at Star in the circle. You almost died in trying to save your sister and the people you love from someone who had become very bitter and twisted with a wolf just as much as he was. Candace looked at her hesitantly. Can I ask a question? I know what you are thinking. The moon goddess said quietly. Why did I grant Damon a wolf, knowing what he would become? She looked off into the distance, sometimes even goddesses make mistakes. But had he not had his wolf he never would have felt the mate bond that led him to you. If things hadn't played out as they did you wouldn't have met Stephen or Star. Candace mulled over her words, but Sarah and the others, she said sadly. The moon goddess sighed there with me now until their spirit is reborn once again into a new vessel. Why am I here if I'm not dead? You were willing to sacrifice your life in order to save those you love. I admire that Candace and your pure heart and soul. Because of that I'm going to save Star. I merely wanted to meet you and make certain that Star would still be welcomed. Yes Candace begged I don't want to be without her. I love her too. The moon goddess eyes welled with happy tears as she sniffled and rose to her feet gracefully, lending Candace an arm as she helped her up. Together they wandered into the circle and stood next to the wolf who was unaware of their presence. The moon goddess placed a hand on Star's back, her eyes closed in concentration and Candace gasped as white light traveled from her hand and into Star's body. Slowly Star's wounds began to close up and fully heal, the blood disappearing in front of Candace's astonished eyes. Soon Star lay there completely healed and Candace ran a hand over her silky fur with a worried smile. Why wasn't Star awake? 
She was about to remove her hand when she heard a snort and Star's eyes opened wide as she licked Candace's face with a cheeky grin. Star Candace screamed, hugging the wolf tightly as her tail wagged, and she buried her head into Candace's shoulder. You both make a lovely pair, the moon goddess said, pleased as Star bobbed her head quickly and began to rant her thanks. Star, it is lovely to meet you, she told the wolf, giving her a pat as she turned to Candace. Candace, dear, she told her sweetly and embraced her, you need to put your hand on Star. It's time you both woke up, sweetheart. Woke up, thought Candace, bewildered. What did she mean by woke up? She put her hand on Star, whose tongue was looking out in her sheer happiness. Perfect, the moon goddess approved moving closer. Oh, and Candace, my love, she added congratulations. Candace was about to open her mouth and ask what she meant when the moon goddess reached over and touched her hand, vanishing from Candace's very eyes as a white light surrounded her and blinded her for a moment. Then it felt like she was falling hard before darkness overtook her again. Awake. The first sound Candace heard was the sound of beeping penetrating her ears as she struggled to open her eyelids, which felt unexplainable heavy. Her body lay on something hard and firm and as she blinked her eyes open and stared at the white walls and various machines surrounding her. Was she in a hospital room? Why? The last thing Candace remembered was fighting with Damon and seeing Stephen carry her. What had happened after that? She tiredly turned her head and sucked in a breath. Stephen was in the room with her. Candace looked at his rumpled clothes and messy hair with a frown. He looked so uncomfortable in the chair, all squished up as he slept, emitting little snoring noises. How long had she been out, thought Candace. Stephen looked like hell and she went to sit up only to realize that she had IVs and tubes connected to her. The positive was that she could feel no injuries or stinging cuts on her body so her injuries must be gone, she thought. She licked her dry lips and wondered if she should call out for help. Somehow the idea of ripping out the tubes and that wasn't really that appealing to her. Her throat was dry and as she called out in a raspy voice, she sighed and realized she would have to wait until a DR or nurse came in. Her voice wasn't loud enough for anyone to be able to hear. It must have been loud enough for poor Stephen though as his eyes sprang open and he looked wearily around the room. His eyes widened when he saw Candace's own eyes staring back at him and he almost fell over trying to dislodge himself from the chair as he rushed to her side. Candace he whispered thickly you're awake. She smiled at him even as she saw the dark circles under his eyes and how pale he looked. I'm awake, she rasped, and he hurriedly grabbed a water cup, helping her to sit as she drank it down, thankfully. Let me get a DR, Stephen said excitedly, running out of the room as she leant back against the bed with. Sigh. A lovely woman, DR, bustled in, Stephen right beside her. Candace looked at the woman's name tag. Cindy she was called. Well Candace Cindy said warmly I see that you are awake. How are you feeling? Any aches or pains? My body feels sort of achy all over Candace admitted but I don't feel any bad pain or anything. That's good the DR assured her do you know where you are? A hospital Candace said wryly as the DR chuckled. What about the year it is or your sister's name she urged. Candace thought for a moment it's 2021 I hope and Lori is my sister she told her while the DR hummed in response and wrote something on the clipboard she was carrying. Fantastic Cindy said happily, moving to check Candace's vitals and take her blood pressure. Everything looks good and you are clearly coherent and aware of your surroundings she declared as Stephen's eyes brightened behind her. Reflexes are good, she muttered, after whacking Candace's knees with an instrument. Do you feel hungry at all? A little Candace said sheepishly as her stomach growled, making them all laugh. 
Okay, we'll organize something to eat in a few minutes, but it will have to be something soft like jello to begin with. Cindy warned your body will need to adjust to eating properly again. How long has it been? Candace asked anxiously, throat seizing up. Stephen took her hand. It's been three months, Candace, he said quietly as she gave a gasp. That long, she said weakly. Why, what happened? Cindy gave her a sympathetic smile. Your body needed to recover from your extensive injuries, so it put you in a coma, so to speak, to allow you to heal. What about Lori? Candace asked, turning to Stephen. Lori is back at school. He reassured her she's been visiting you every day afterwards, and she's all right, Candace. She's a strong woman just like you, he told her tenderly, as she closed her eyes relieved. How about we take these drips and IVs out of your arms, Cindy offered as Candace gave a happy nod. She swore as the tape pulled at the hairs on her arms stinging as Cindy apologized profusely. Sorry, she exclaimed, I'm trying to be gentle. They were out and Candace moved her arms around, frowning at how weak she felt. Your muscles will get strong again, Cindy told her it will take some time, but as you are awake I'm hopeful that your wolf is too. If that's the case you should gain back your strength relatively quickly. Can I go home yet, Candace whispered as Stephen gently stroked her hair. I would like you to stay a few more nights under observation before you discharge, to make sure everything stays fine and to get you adjusted to eating again etc. Cindy said sternly as Candace's face dropped. Stevens did as well. Please Candace begged. She wanted to feel her nice comfortable bed and sleep in a quiet room with Stephen by her side. She was desperate for him to hold her and to catch up on everything she had missed. Cindy wavered, indecision on her face. Candace's eyes were beseeching her and she found herself unable to say no as the Alpha silently begged her as well. A compromise, she said, finally you stay here for a few hours and be closely monitored. Then, if everything remains fine, I will discharge you on the premise that I or another DR visit you in your home for the next week every day to check your vitals and on your well-being. Deal, Candace and Stephen said in unison, laughing at each other as Cindy gave a huff. The things I do for you people, she muttered as Candace and Stephen giggled at her pretend annoyance. Candace stared down at her hospital gown and groaned. Am I allowed to shower? You can Cindy said shooting Stephen a look, but only if Stephen accompanies you and remains there with you. I know he has a bag with your clothes and stuff in it, because he's brought it here and kept it in the nurse's station. Also she may need help dressing and making it back to the bed she growled do not drop her, hurt her or anything else. Stephen the first left out the important part that you need to tell Candace. He gulped nodding as Candace looked at him questionably. Cindy hovered in the doorway, I'll go organize some food for you Candace, jello or mousse or something. Any allergies? I couldn't find any in your medical files and Stephen wasn't a hundred percent sure. None Candace said distracted. Cindy gave a cheery wave as Stephen tenderly gathered her in his arms and headed into the adjacent bathroom. He turned the water on warm please Candace insisted as he chuckled. Suddenly he swore. I forgot to grab the bag, he said it's got your toiletries in it as well. He spotted the shower chair sitting in the corner and sat her in it. Will you be all right for a minute? He checked. The chair was sturdy with a back to it. I'm fine she said especially if the bag has shampoo in it so I can wash my hair she teased. Stephen barked a laugh at her as he walked out and she looked at the shower expectantly. Sure she couldn't stand in there on her own, but she could at least take the gown off while she waited. It didn't feel like she was wearing any underwear at any rate. Carefully she pulled her arms through the sleeves and untied the back, letting the gown fall to the bathroom floor. It was what she saw next that stopped her in her tracks. 
Candace looked at her stomach and the small round bump that was present. Her hand rubbed it as the bathroom door burst open and Stephen came in. Stephen, she said in a shaky voice, am I pregnant? A happy surprise. It was two weeks after she had woken up in the hospital and Candace was slowly adjusting back to her normal everyday life. She had gotten over her shock of being pregnant and had also been spending a lot of time with Lori who insisted on seeing her immediately after getting home from school every day. She was also extremely bored. If she so much as lifted a finger, Stephen would rush over and do it for her. They had literally wrestled and fought over who was going to vacuum the rug in their bedroom the other day. Mate is just trying to take good care of us? Star chided? You should let him. He's been worried out of his mind for three months waiting for us to wake up. I know Candace said grumpily, but I'm not some delicate flower that needs help every minute of every day. I'm going insane star. Seriously, I will scream if I don't find something to do. We could walk outside? Star suggested keenly. It's a nice day and Stephen's on pack business so he's out of the house right now. It's not like that's going to cause any harm. Good idea Candace told her, happily putting her shoes on. Her bump was still relatively small and didn't hinder her yet. I wish I could shift though she thought sadly. Me too, Star agreed, but it would hurt our pup and I wouldn't want to do that. After our little pup is born we can shift again. Star do you know the gender by any chance? Candace was curious about whether the wolf could tell what the baby was. I'm afraid not, Star said reluctantly. I wish I could though, that would be awesome. I don't care if it's a boy or girl as long as the pup is healthy. Me too thought Candace heading outside. The fresh air felt heavenly as she slowly walked outside trying very hard to ignore the concerned looks of the pack members. Do you need something Luna? Do you need help? Would you like me to get Steven? On and on it went as she gritted her teeth in frustration. Stop. She wanted to yell, I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself. Instead, she forced herself to smile and assure everyone she was fine, that she was simply going for a walk and that no, she didn't need to have Stephen disturbed in order to join her. She was almost stomping on her walk now, feeling everyone's gaze bore into her back. It's kind of funny if you think about it. At least you know that the pack cares about you very much. I could do with a little less caring, thought Candace bitterly. The walk felt ruined now and she turned back to the pack house and made her way back with a huff. She spied Cindy and Stephen hovering by the front door in surprise. Cindy, she said, hugging the woman enthusiastically, what brings you here? She eyed Stephen suspiciously don't tell me Stephen got you down here for another checkup she groaned as she glared at a sheepish Stephen. Cindy laughed not at all, in fact this time I insisted. Candace raised an eyebrow at her. Over the last two weeks the women had become firm friends. Candace had bonded with Cindy instantly and loved the girl's sense of humor and the warmth she possessed. Cindy felt the same towards Candace. How would you like to find out the gender of your precious baby? Cindy said excitedly as Stephen gave a whoop. Yes, Star crowed in Candace's mind. She laughed, I would love to. Cindy clapped her hands with delight, leading the way to a room specially set up in the pack house. Candace took in the setup impressed. An ultrasound was set up in the corner, and a comfortable bed, definitely not a hospital bed, sat in the center of the room, pillows fluffed up and sitting at the bed head for her. My lady Stephen said, guiding her to the bed and sitting her against the pillows. Candace giggled as he sat on the bed next to her. The gel's a little cold Cindy warned as she lifted up Candace's top and pressed the probe against her stomach. Candace gasped at the sensation, 
her eyes shooting to the monitor as Cindy began to move the probe around. An image of their little baby showed up on the screen. There's its head Cindy showed them and their legs. Stephen was staring at the screen, tears welling up as he took in the image of their child. He was speechless, grasping Candace's hand in his as he tried to memorize every little detail in his mind. There's its bottom Cindy grinned as they all laughed. Please Cindy Candace begged as Cindy grinned mischievously. Please what she said wickedly as Candace gave her a beaming smile. Please oh magnificent and kind dr she joked as Cindy nodded her approval. Okay she said with dramatic suffering but only cause I like you. The probe moved around a bit more until Cindy found what she was looking for. Here we are she announced dramatically with a flare at the genitals of your precious one. Now I'm only going to ask this once. Are you certain that you want to know the gender? Candace and Stephen looked at each other and then back at her yes they chorused. All right then without further ado Cindy announced the genitals shown here are those of a vagina. It took them a minute to process. A girl Candace murmured as tears filled her eyes were having a girl. Stephen was just as much choked up. A little girl he whispered I'm going to be a daddy to a little princess. Cindy calmly printed off a few pictures as her friends sat there stunned. A girl to rule the world she said approvingly with a badass mom and a sweetheart daddy. What a lucky baby. She handed the pictures to Candace who jumped up and gave her a fierce hug, sobbing into her shoulder. Thank you so much, she sniffled you've done so much for us. Cindy gave her a deadpan look I didn't help you make the baby. They both dissolved into laughter. I'll leave you two lovebirds alone Cindy chirped, but Candace I'm warning you now. We are going to the mall tomorrow. You, me, Lori and some hot warriors that Stephen better choose. She rushed out of the room like a mini tornado before Candace could blink. The energy of that woman she muttered sitting down and shuffling next to Stephen. A girl Stephen whispered kissing Candace's forehead. A girl she whispered back lovingly as she kissed him. Stephen's ex. Candace was exhausted. When Cindy had said they were going to the mall, she hadn't been kidding. Candace could have dealt with that if it hadn't involved hours of trudging back and forth in all the stores for hours on end. Lori had been just as bad, so excited over being an auntie that no amount of Candace begging would get her to stop searching for the perfect gift for her niece. The only time they had stopped was to eat in the food court. It had been heaven putting her feet up. She had lingered over her burger and fries prolonging the time when she would have to get back up and keep going. She thanked Stephen profusely in her mind for sending some very gorgeous single warriors with them. Not because she was enjoying ogling them, but because it meant Cindy was spending time flirting with all of them as they ate their food, effectively giving Candace a good hour or more before they started shopping again to her dismay. Candace liked to shop but she didn't love it the way Lori and Cindy seemed to. Her arms were loaded down with the lightest bags the girls would let her carry, and even those were heavy. All of them loaded down with pretty pink outfits for the baby as well as dummies and cute socks and hats and all sorts of things the girls had gone crazy buying. Thank goodness for Stephen's credit card, thought Candace guiltily. He'd told her to spend as much as she wanted, but she was positive he didn't quite mean this much. Lori had already dumped the rest of the bags in her room and Candace stared at the pile quietly in disbelief as Cindy came soaring in and added her bags to the mix. Don't you think we went a little overboard, she said to Cindy who gave her a glare. I don't think so, she said softly, I mean I actually really held myself back. Candace's jaw dropped open. If this was the result of Cindy holding back then she was terrified to see how much she purchased when she didn't. Besides this is no way near enough stuff. 
There's still plenty of stuff your little darling will need. Really Candace said weakly, collapsing onto the bed with a groan. You still need to get the big stuff, Cindy told her wide-eyed cot, bassinet, pram, diaper bag, bottles, formula or breast pump, sheets for the cot, swaddles. Cindy trailed off as Candace gulped. Maybe Stephen would like to get the bigger stuff, she thought hopefully. Cindy was almost dancing around the room now next time we'll take Stephen with us, she chirped that way he can help choose and you can both pick out stuff together while Lori and I browse through all the shops. She's going to kill me, thought Candace, almost hyperventilating at the thought of even more shopping. Cindy saw the look in her eyes, oh don't worry, she exclaimed hastily, we'll give it at least a week so you can recover before we go again. A week Candace muttered weakly, can't the bigger stuff wait until it's closer to the due date. Cindy shook her head gravely, you'll want to pick out colors for your nursery and have everything matching, she said decidedly as Candace gave a groan. She couldn't fault Lori and Cindy. Her and Stephen were excited too. In fact, he would have gone on this trip, but he had urgent pack business to attend to. Cindy had dragged her out before she could question what that urgent pack business was. Anywho, Cindy said as she looked in the mirror and fixed her hair, I'm going to have to love you and leave you, she said cheerfully, giving Candace a saucy wink. I have a date to get ready for. Why was Candace not surprised? One of the single warriors who just so happened to accompany us to the mall, she said drilly as Cindy giggled. Of course she giggled flipping her hair well darling take care and I'll visit again soon. Candace had to laugh I want to hear about your date, she yelled at Cindy's retreating back. I'll give you all the saucy details she heard back as she flopped down on her bed. Her muscles ached and she was so tired and sweaty. Shopping should be made into a sport she thought. At least where Cindy was concerned. Where on earth did that woman get all of her energy? Star agreed with a bit of envy. Maybe she could take a nap? She sniffed herself and grimaced. Yuck I think I'll take a shower first, she said with disgust. She had just gotten dressed from her very refreshing and rejuvenating hot shower when there was a knock on the door. Candace opened it, surprised to see Annabelle standing there. I'm sorry to disturb you, Luna, she began, bowing her head. Annabelle, how many times do I have to tell you to call me Candace, she told the young teenager. Sorry, Candace, she amended, but there is someone in the study wanting to speak to the Alpha. Since he's not available at the moment, I thought. Got it, Candace said, sparing a regretful glance at her inviting cozy bed. Her nap was going to have to wait, she thought forlornly. Did he give you his name? She asked Annabelle. It's a she, Annabelle corrected, and she said her name is Lauren. That was all she would tell me. Sounds like a right bitch, thought Candace with disapproval. Did she say something to you, Annabelle? She said concerned as the teenager was biting her lip and trying not to cry. She said she doesn't talk to filthy omegas, that I was to find someone more worthy to talk to her that respected her station. Annabelle wouldn't meet Candace's eyes now as she looked down at the floor. Candace a fury grew. How fucking dare she come into my pack and insult her family? Candace thought viciously. The woman was in for a rude awakening when Candace got down there. She drew Annabelle into a hug first of all she told her you are not a filthy Omega. Annabelle sniffled as Candace stood back and forced her chin up with a finger, making Annabelle look at her. You are a valued member of this pack, she told her firmly we do not have Omegas or servants. You are a trusted member of this household who works hard for a living. That does not make you a servant, inferior or below anyone. She had no right to say that to you. Thanks, Candace, Annabelle, mumbled still looking upset. Take the rest of the day off, Candace told her you'll still get paid a full day's wage 
but I want you to go enjoy yourself. I'll go deal with this which she snapped as Annabelle giggled. Thank you Annabelle whispered almost skipping down the stairs in her happiness. Candace watched her go. There was a knot in her stomach as she looked downstairs. Her instincts were screaming at her to leave this woman for Stephen to deal with, not to go down there. But Stephen was out for who knows how long she thought a little annoyed. The least he could have done is let her know he would be out and that he was expecting someone. I don't like the sound of this woman. She sounds very spoilt and entitled. Star commented on annoyance. I agree thought Candace, slowly making her way downstairs, her hand firmly gripping the banister. The study door was open and Candace peered in at a distance at the woman standing there and tapping her foot against the ground impatiently. She was stunning. Candace would give her that. Her long red hair was wavy, falling loosely down to her hips. Her green eyes were narrowed into slits as she glanced around the study in frustration. Her skin was a lovely shade of golden honey and her tiny waist and generous bosom were emphasized by the skin-tight green dress she wore. There was not a hair out of place marveled Candace. She felt dowdy in comparison, clad in her comfortable sweatpants and oversized shirt. Hesitantly she walked into the study, the woman. Lauren turning around huffing. About time she snapped, eyes widening as she took in the sight of Candace I wanted to speak to the Alpha or Luna not another filthy Omega for goodness sake. Candace took a deep breath first of all she said evenly we don't have Omegas as you like to call it in this pack. The woman's mouth opened as Candace continued undeadered second of all I am the Luna of this pack whom you have just greatly insulted she snapped I do not appreciate you upsetting my pack members by calling them names. The woman's eyes were blazing now how dare you she cried in a cutting voice. Candace's eyes narrowed I dare she emphasized because I am the Luna as I said. Now Lauren was it she said irritably no longer caring how rude she was being to the insufferable woman how about you sit the hell down and tell me what the hell you are doing in my pack's territory, guest or no guest. Lauren was speechless, the blood draining out of her face as she shakily took a seat, cheeks flushed in her embarrassment at being dressed down by a poorly dressed Luna. Well she thought with great satisfaction. She was about to sweep the rug from under that cocky bitch's feet, that was for sure. Candace was still waiting, arms folded against her chest. She really regretted not having that nap now or listening to her instincts. She wasn't in the mood for this woman's crap, that was for sure. She cursed Stephen in her mind for even inviting or allowing this bitch here in the first place. God he was in trouble when he got home she thought viciously. Even Star was ready to shift and tear out this woman's throat and Star was normally a placid wolf. I want her gone Candace? Star growled. I do too Candace told her. Lauren was fidgeting in the chair, wringing her hands anxiously. I meant no offense Luna she said in a tiny voice looking down. Bullshit. She's putting on an act? Star snarled. It was taking all of Candace's willpower to keep her wolf back, startled at how much Star disliked the woman. Geez Star, chill down she scolded. Lauren met Candace's eyes timidly. Maybe I shouldn't have come she breathed, but I really felt that you needed to know and I wanted answers too. After all he made me promises that he should have kept. Candace had a sinking feeling in her gut who made promises they didn't keep. Was it a member of my pack Candace quizzed? Lauren gave a bitter laugh, oh he's from this pack all right, she agreed with a chuckle. I believe you know him, Stephen who is now alpha of this pack I believe. Candace felt herself beginning to shake and the walls felt like they were closing in. No, not Stephen she thought with despair. Calm down Candace, this could all be an innocent? Mistake or she could be lying to you. Breathe damn it and get to the bottom of this. 
She thought it was ironic Star was trying to calm her down now. What promises did Stephen make to you? She whispered, not wanting to hear the answer. Lauren held out her hand triumphantly, a diamond ring sparkling on her ring finger. He promised to marry me, she said as Candace fought the bile rising in her throat. She felt grief rising in her at the thought that Stephen had betrayed her all along. Why would he promise to marry you, she forced herself to say, her voice sounding far away to her not when you aren't even mates. Lauren looked at her with pity even as she celebrated inwardly at the stricken look on Candace's face. The woman hadn't even had the decency to introduce herself. If that dirty Omega hadn't muttered the Luna's name, Lauren still wouldn't know what it was. A small smile played on her lips as Candace grabbed the back of the chair for support, standing with trembling legs. Stephen got his wolf late, she explained with a soft voice as Candace nodded. Candace already knew that. Lauren continued naturally he was worried that he might not even be gifted with a wolf. Without a wolf there is no mate bond. So when he asked me out I accepted. Candace bit her lip not liking where this was going as we dated we fell in love. He was so incredibly sweet so romantic that when he proposed I naturally said yes. Lauren leaned forward holding Candace's gaze I was so happy to be spending my life with him with the man I loved. Everything was perfect, she told Candace, who was feeling sicker by the minute. I went away for a little while with my parents to visit some relatives in Paris, Lauren said with a whisper imagine my surprise when I got back to find Stephen gone. No trace of him to be found. It was only recently that I found out that he got his wolf after all and was now alpha of this pack. Candace fell into her chair. Trembling as she continued, I can see that he has marked you, but he can't just shy away from his responsibilities. The mate bond can be undone, you know, if a powerful witch casts the spell to do it. Candace was trying to absorb her words. Responsibilities, she repeated. Lauren stood up with a flourish and for the first time Candace looked at her clearly as she pulled the dress against her stomach a bump clearly visible beneath her dress that Candace hadn't seen in her anger. You're pregnant, Candace said in horror as Lauren gave a nod yes, and I intend for Stephen to keep his promise and marry me. Mate or not I should not have to raise this child on my own. Candace couldn't think straight. Stephen had lied to her all this time. God, she was so stupid, she thought bitterly. When was she going to learn from her mistakes? She could still be lying, Candace. We won't know until we see Stephen. Candace was still desperately clutching at that small sliver of hope when the study door opened and Stephen walked in. He took one bewildered and frightened look and burst out Lauren, and just like that Candace's world came crashing down.